I was five years old, he described to me how to stick a bayonet into a guy. The spirit directs the hand, not the brain. My direct experience growing up in Brooklyn, which was very physical and uh, at times violent. Okay, good. A lot of times I'll have drawings on the floor here, and out of the corner of my eye I'll see a drawing that's like, oh, I like those lines, and boom, I'll have to go right away, very spontaneously and follow that impulse. All the things that uh, you see in Michelangelo's drawings of the human form, uh, nobody looks like that at the beach. This is something that is transcendent. This is spiritual. I expected like to walk in the room and see like he had a mask on, a human face and a lizard underneath. And I didn't. I never felt he was human, let alone my father. He was a beast, and my mother and my grandmother were kind of in charge of him. It was like being in the room with a, a gorilla. You don't. You know. You you hope he's not going to kill everybody. Uh, the movie uh, Raging Bull was something like that, you know, that kind of violence. You, you were in that room and he could just go off and, you know, kill everybody. And I, I had recurring nightmares of killing him with an axe. <coughs> okay. So here are my drawings. Um, focused on physical aspect of existence in terms of the human form in combat and conflict situations. Going back to the Renaissance, uh, particularly uh, Brunelleschi's dome, uh, understanding of Renaissance space. Um, I have uh, here a full-size skeleton. Uh, the emphasis is on the pelvis. Um, this one I just put on Instagram, actually. Uh, is a woman on uh, dinosaur back, not horseback. Uh, here's a woman on horseback. Um, and the idea is uh, about uh, the human form as a kind of cosmic event that uh, happens uh, in history and uh, compared to other things that have come and gone, like the dinosaurs. Uh, and here's an artist I'm influenced by very much. Um, Growing up, I was very influenced by <coughs> Mad Magazine, uh, drawing Spider-Man. Uh, I went to um, High School of Art and Design, and there uh, I was introduced to the old masters by some of the teachers uh, at the Art Students League. And that, uh, well, that was in the 1960s, so that has been the source of my inspiration all these years. This is beyond the physical. Nobody looks like Michelangelo's David, <laughs> you see. Uh, when I saw that and, and drew that and, and I immersed in that, it was a revelation. I, I remember still living at home and, and taking library books out of the library, uh, Grand Island Plaza, and um, just looking at Michelangelo draw and seeing on my ceiling the flying figures and just being in a rapture. Um, in this way, it's like meditation, the Zen meditation, which I did 
many years, and the chanting, which I know four sutras, uh, <coughs> and chant that. This is the energy that comes from Hara, the center, that comes from the earth. So when we are physically aligned with the earth, the gravity, our core, Hara, is aligned with the core of the earth, which is aligned with the cosmos. And Michelangelo knew this. My earliest recollection of my father was not that he was human. He was, I didn't know what drinking was. I was four, you know, three even, I remember. Uh, he seemed to be like a space alien. I, I didn't think it was, I thought it was a space alien sent from another planet to take over. And I walked out of there shaking. Uh, I just went like this and waited for it to be over like all those other drunken monologues. Uh, but I realized I had to get out of there, and I was lucky that I found a, a storefront with no heat. <laughs> but I was just happy to be away, because I would have killed him. I didn't know what to do with it. <sighs> and I started doing karate, and I always felt better after a karate class. I, I loved it. I went to uh, John Marshall Junior High School 210, the middle of uh, Bedford Stuyvesant, 1960s, early 60s. The students were in charge, the teachers weren't. The, the teachers were afraid of the students, a lot of them were left back ten times. In real time, the physical exists in real time. The breath. Um, in this way it's like meditation. You have to go into another phase. You have to kind of not focus, not knowing what the next line is going to be, is what's exciting and challenging to me. <clears throat> it's hard for us to understand today. And I hope to, uh, for myself and others, um, bring light to this knowledge of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual because it's sorely lacking in our society. All the things the philosophers talk about, being in nothingness, being in the present, being in this moment. I mean, the breath is everything. It's, you know, time, space. Go to sleep standing up, it's good. You're supposed to go to sleep, but not really sleep. Everywhere you go, everything you do, you're always ready, you're always present. That's what the art is, that's the spiritual, that's what connects the physical, the mental, and the spiritual.